So now for my next example, we've got Mr. Banana. Okay, so same idea. You know, we're drawing some fun to cut open things, fruits and vegetables, and uh, we want to know what the banana would look like if we were to draw it with some section views. So this time I'm going to draw the front of the banana, and I'd like you to try to make a little sketch that looks like this banana. Now, I know it's tough to draw fruit exactly perfectly. And again, I don't know if I mentioned this, but I have uh, an advanced art degree with a specialization in drawing fruit. I mean, just look at that. That's remarkable, right? So the outline of our fruit, well, this is an object line. It's the visible profile of that banana, looking at it dead on. And I've got to say, it looks pretty good. Now, the question is going to be, where do we cut? Where do we cut it? Right? And to cut it, instead of saying cut here and drawing my finger, I'm going to just draw a special kind of line to indicate where that cut takes place. So I'm going to kind of plan where I want the cut, and then I'm going to draw it out. And this kind of line has got this pattern of long, too short, long, too short. And if we had more or repeated, it would repeat with that pattern, long, too short. And I'll throw an arrowhead on each end of the hook, a little 90 degree bend at the bottom. This is our cutting plane line, and it's going to give us the instructions we need on where that cut is supposed to take place. So, you can imagine our bananas here, and we can imagine our flying invisible knife comes out like this, and it lines up, and you know, bananas aren't too gooey. I think I can cut this right on top of my drawing with minimal mess. And yeah, that was pretty good. All right, so the cutting plane determines where the cut takes place. Which side are we keeping? Are we keeping the right? Or we keep in the left? Well, the arrows say look to the left, so we have to keep the left. That means we'll pull the right away. And now, if this is my front view, I need to make a side view that incorporates what, my, what I'm seeing with this section. So what do you see? Very interesting, huh? So look, I slice through the skin and the banana right here. But I also see the rest of the banana kind of curving away from me in the background there. So I'm going to draw what I see. Now, you can project all the stuff from here over to the side, just like we did when we did orthographic drawing. Some construction lines. And I'll do the same thing here at the top of the stem so I know where the banana is supposed to stop. All right, and just taking another quick look at it. What am I looking at? I'm looking at that shape there. I'm looking at the banana tapering away to the stem. All right, so my banana's down here. And then it slowly tapers back to the stem, and then the stem is quite thin all the way up. All right, now, when we slice through this thing, where do we slice? What got sliced? Well, this part here did. So what is solid? What is the section reviewing as being solid? Well, it's this part. So down here for our thin, dark section lines at 45 degrees, they're going to fill in this area over here. And of course, when we're sketching, you see I'm not too worried about exact spacing and I'm not too worried about straight lines. But we're just sketching. We can worry about all that stuff later on when we're working with the tools and trying to make things look perfect. So that is a section view. Here's my front view, regular view. Here's my side view as a section. This also is a full section. I didn't slice through the whole thing, but I did slice completely through the part at this point. And this is fully sectioned. We didn't leave anything unsectioned, but we did draw what was behind it. Now, sometimes on a drawing, you're going to see more than one cutting plane line, and that's okay. 
that's okay. Because some shapes are very complex, and they will need more than one cutting plane and one section. Think about the shape of the banana. This shape changes along its whole length. You could section it every half inch and get a different shape each time. So now let's think about this. This is another section. Um, my section view will probably be up here, perpendicular to that view, to that cutting plane. So I'll draw a couple of light lines perpendicular to the cutting plane where it's cutting through the stem. And then uh, think about that. If we cut through the stem, are we going to have something that looks like like this? Or are we going to have something different? Well, if you said something different, you're right. If you're not quite sure what it's going to be, though, uh, it's okay. We'll take a look together. That's why we're taking a class, right? So, well, that's a tough one. I never heard an expression like tough bananas, but man, that's a tough one right there. Okay. All right, let's see if we can reassemble it a little bit. So we did our cut. We did our cut. We did our cut right there. Which part are we keeping? The big part or the little part? See, so we're going to keep the little part because we're looking toward the little part. So we'll pull away the big part. And when I do, when I look dead on, what do I see? Well, you know what? It's just a little round shape that makes up the stem. Nothing too exciting, really. Okay, and is it solid? You bet it is, right? So this whole thing, then, gets section lined because it's solid. Now, when you start to do more than one cutting plane line in a drawing, you'll have multiple section views on that drawing. And to be honest with you, they don't always get projected like this. Sometimes they just get stuff off on the side and you have to figure out which section goes to which cutting plane. Now, if that's going to be the case, that could be confusing, right? So there's a system that we use to make sure that we don't get confused. And here's the system. On this cutting plane, I'm going to write A, A. And then over here, this would be section A, A. Okay, now on this cutting plane here, I will write B, B. And then up here, I will call this guy section B, B. And again, is this a full section? What do you think? Well, yeah, because we cut through it completely and we showed everything that we saw and it is fully sectioned. So here is our banana. We made two cutting planes and we have two section drawings based on our delicious Chiquita banana. All right, so here's our next example. Our next example is a pear. Beautiful, huh? Okay. And what I would like to do is I would like to have you, if you'd be so kind, try to draw the shape of this pear. Now, usually about now students start getting intimidated when they see my amazing drawing skills when it comes to fruit. And they say, how did you learn to make fruit so realistic? And I tell them, well, I spent several years of my youth in Tibet learning from a tapas master in a monastery on focusing on the form of fruit. And uh, as part of that, I have now the ability to draw fruit almost perfectly. Look at that, huh? Thing of beauty. Okay, so we know pears are kind of, what's the word? Pear-shaped, I guess, right? They're kind of bottom heavy. Uh, you can wobble them, but they don't really fall down very well. Unless you knock them really good, they kind of always spring back up into position long as you don't hit them too hard. So here's the front view of our pear. Oh, why don't we do this? Why don't we say we're going to cut the pear right up at the top there. So again, I'm going to set up my cutting plane line with that pattern of long, too short, long. And then at the ends, we're going to bend it 90 degrees. And we're going to 
try to figure out where we're going to cut and then which side are we going to keep. Now the pear is a little bit juicier than a banana, so I think we need to use this. So have you figured that out? Have you determined where you would cut and then which side to keep? Yeah, we're going to keep the top half, right? Because it's saying, hey, cut it here and look that way. So we won't be looking at the bottom half. So let me do that. Okay, so there is the cut. And we will pull it away. And there is the top. So there is the top. And here is the front. And we're drawing that up there. And again, you know, it's always safe to project. You want to get things lined up, then you project. If you want to make things the right size, then you project. We could project where the cutting plane hits the profile on the profile of the pair. And that'll tell us up in the top where to make that shape, how big it is. And again, any hollow or all solid? All solid. So if it's all solid, we'll go back in with some section lines to show that this is totally solid. All right. Now, there's nothing wrong with looking at it from the other way, too. Uh, we could slice it here, and we could put a side view here as a section. Maybe there's a hollow spot inside. Maybe there's a little pocket where there's a seed, right? But since there's not, from what we see, we're just going to say this is a done deal. And what kind of section? Well, full section. It doesn't matter that the front is not sectioned. It just matters when you cut it, did you look completely at it? And is the part you cut completely sectioned? And in this case, it is. This thing. Look at this bad boy, huh? Um, about worth its weight in gold these days. I remember when avocados were cheap. What the heck happened, right? So uh, here's an avocado. And if it's a little hard to see, I'll throw a little bit more light on it for you. So you can see it's not a piece of blacktop. Uh, nice little, nice little just ripe avocado, a West Pack. So what I want to do with this though, it's kind of special. Uh, I want to cut it in a certain way. And I don't know about you, but when I go buy avocados, I've got this dream avocado in mind. The dream avocado's got a little tiny seed in the middle. And the rest is avocado. But more often than not, that's not exactly what I get. Uh, more often than not, I get giant seed. So it's a gamble we take, right? Let's do this. Let's take our avocado. Uh, let's stick it on our sketch pad. Let's try to draw the shape of the avocado as realistically and as perfectly as we can, given our limitations as mere mortals, right? And uh, you're probably thinking, wow, that is the most amazing outline of an avocado I've ever seen. It's almost like I traced it or something. I mean, really, it's that good, right? All right. And then we know at the top, what do we got? We got a little dimple up there. And uh, this one's brown. I think that means it's ready, maybe even over ready. All right, so where are we cutting, right? That's the idea. That's the question. Where's the cut going to happen? The cut is going to happen right here. The cut is going to look that way. And this is going to require some extreme cutting because I've got a task. i got a goal here. And my goal is, number one, don't cut my fingers off. Number two, cut through everything. And we know avocados aren't exactly uh, hollow on the inside. So, look at that. Accomplish my goal. I didn't cut my fingers off, and I did cut through everything. All right. So now, this is kind of a special case, because there's something going on here that hasn't happened before. And true to form, look at this. I've got like three quarters pit and one quarter avocado. It's 
a family curse, I think. Okay. So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to kind of draw the shape of the front view of this avocado. And uh, it's kind of kind of a rough, irregular oblate spheroid, I think you would call that, if we were in earth science. Um, and is it solid on the inside? What would you say? Totally solid. Um, but you know, there's something that makes this different than everything else we've cut through so far. And that is that the avocado that you eat is a vastly different material than the seed, right? So, let's draw the seed in there. Now, the deal is, if we're honest with ourselves, this is all solid, and we would hatch the whole thing. We would use section lines to fill in this entire area because it's all solid. The issue, though, is that these are two different materials, two different parts, if you want to think about it like that. Even though they touch each other, they are not the same composition. So I'm going to do something here. I'm going to put section lines in the pit part because the pit is solid and I slice through it. But then on the meat part, my section lines are going to go in the opposite direction. And the reason I'm doing this is because if I didn't, even though I have an outline there to show where the seed is, it might kind of blend into the background, especially with all these other thin dark lines indicating that we're cutting through a solid. When you switch direction up like this, it's not for artistic effect. You're switching direction up because you have two dissimilar materials, two different parts that happen to be touching each other. They're adjacent to one another. And as such, we want to show clearly that these are two different things. And I think you can kind of see that now, right? Uh, the outside part is one material. The inside part is a different material. All right, and I got to eat this before it turns brown. That looks beautiful. Okay. Our avocado. What kind of section is this? Well, just like everything we've done up to this point, the avocado is a full section. Full section. Right? The front view is completely sectioned, fully sectioned. Okay, and that'll be a little bit different because we're going to talk about a, another kind of section that's going to be a little confusing when it comes to the name for it. 